Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! There may be champions in the area of prophecy. You can find people who, as soon as you look at them, I once met a man of God years ago. Sincerely, I'm not sure. It's not even on TV. I went. This, 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 these are my very deep contemplations. When it has to do with matters of death to the flesh. When it has to do with matters of death to the flesh, it has to do with matters of character and it has to do with matters of Christ-like manifestations. I wrote here, there are no champions there. There may be champions in the area of prophecy. You can find people who as soon as you look at them, I once met a man of God years ago, sincerely. I'm not sure, it's not even on TV. I went for a retreat somewhere and I met that man. Have I ever seen a prophet like that? This man would prophesy head to toe and say everything. I have seen champions in the area of the prophetic. History, both ancient and modern, is full of people who took this Bible and literally transported it into their heads. When you listen to some of our fathers of faith, it's as if there is another eye that was given to them that they can open. Even some of us who have touched a bit of this, we know the labor in the spirit that brought this dimension of spiritual acumen and yet you will hear the fathers talk about scripture there are champions in the areas of scripture and revelation there are champions in the area of church growth there are people who you can take them to the village they will bring every other village to that place there is there are champions there but when it has to do with the matters of death to the flesh when it has to do with the matters of character, when it has to do with the matters of Christ-like manifestations, I repeat, there are no champions. Is someone learning now? Philippians chapter 3. Let's read from verse 12 to 15. Apostle Paul, the the, the deep revelator or revealer of scripture apostle paul the writer of two-thirds of the new testament not as though i had already attained paul is not afraid of saying this now you have to understand that he's speaking to the people he's mentoring how many people have the sincerity and the unashamedness to stand before your mentees and admit that as much as they admire you as much as they desire to be like you you yourself have not yet attained there are higher and deeper levels in the spirit we live in a world where our pride especially as men of god is derived around the the extent of our superstitiousness if i will use that expression and our that that kind of godlike mysticism here is an apostle who is saying there's no need to hide it i have not already attained either were already perfect the word there is matured but i follow after even while mentoring you i follow after even while imparting gifts upon you to be established i follow after in other words i am a student myself just privileged to be in a higher class in the spirit if I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended by Jesus Christ. Reading to 15. Give us verse 13. Brethren, he says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth for those things which are before. He says, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It says, let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. That means carry a mentality that never allows you arrive. That you know that no matter what kind of exploits you are doing in the spirit, no matter the level of the anointing, no matter the level of achievement in the spirit, that you know that there are still deeper and higher realms and dimensions in the spirit. If you're with me, say amen.
Now, the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the state of man. Man as God's creation. With respect to the subject, please look up. With respect to the subject of sin and the flesh. I have taught you here that there are two things that man has to deal with. Number one is sin for an unbeliever. But for a believer, even though you have been washed by the blood of the Lamb, the Bible talks about the flesh. With one confession, you are free from sin. But it is not one confession that frees you from flesh. Many believers do not understand these dynamics that you have to be free from the grip of these two things to be able to ascend the mount of God and do mighty things with God. Being free from sin, as wonderful as it is, is the entrance into the kingdom. But there is another major limitation. Are we together? And that when it has to do with the limitation of the flesh, it has nothing to do with being good or bad. It is a limitation that is enshrined in all men. Please, I want you to listen to me. Let it be from the depth of your heart before you become a casualty to yourself. One of the biggest problems that has affected the revivals. Years ago, I preached a message why revivals die. It was a product of a research that I had. I had to study the moves of God and why many of them died. And I found out there was only one reason why revivals die. The humanity of men. Not lack of prayer. Not lack of fasting. No. Not lack of Bible study. Not even lack of going to church. The fact that the careers and the ones who work in partnership with the Holy Spirit to sponsor this revival are men. Listen, when you press to know God, the next project in your spiritual adventure is to know yourself. If you do not pay the price to understand yourself as man, I give you a guarantee you may not arrive. You see, history, the Bible, and history is full of many great people some who crashed did not finish their project some of them were voices that were motivations to their generation and sadly towards the end of their lives something just happened that just eroded their testimony of many decades and let me tell you the truth i have studied people who have risen and stood and finished to the end i have studied people who did not even start i've studied people who started and did well and fell first for my own life and then to be able to unravel this cancer of not finishing strong in the body are we together i can tell you 95 percent of the people who have fallen in history and in the bible are a lot more upright and sincere than many people in our generation yet they did not stand that means we have to learn there is something we need to understand about man. There is a lot of blind, bold face and arrogance that people are communicating in the body of Christ. There, are, there have been sincere people who carry this baton of the faith with integrity and truth. And even with that, some of them did not finish strong. It therefore is a challenge for us to understand what does it take to stand and survive being a light even to the end you may examine many principles you may say they were not anointed and demons came and destroyed them or they were not they didn't understand this those were they can be very valid reasons but one of the greatest reasons is that they do not understand the construct of the fallen man you see when you understand yourself in light of the limitation that is upon all men it will put pressure on you to need god as a matter of life and death your need for god will be artificial until and unless it is derived from this revelation of how incapacitated you are out of the assistance of god when it has to do with the issue of the flesh there is no man who sustains by default indefinitely the capacity to survive the varieties of of the what do they call it now 
the, the various chains that the flesh can bring upon an individual. Please listen very carefully. For someone, tonight's message will be a lifeline. Is what you will hold on to that at the end of your life you will stand with strength and with grace when dr. Panam was speaking about this our dear ones here and was praying for them you know what was in my mind I'm very philosophical in my thinking I was not even really focusing on the people and him number one I was looking at the age difference and then number two I was asking what did he know and what did he find that kept him there because my goodness this world we have seen skilled musicians that did not last six months like orange they came out with fire and that's it this race requires a skill have you seen people run 100 meters and others don't even know how to stand well from the first step they are gone others will run to the end others in running they, they've not taken time to master this thing The flesh is a subject that has been approached from two standpoints. Number one, from a standpoint of avoidance. People refuse to talk about it simply because of the embarrassing situations that are wrapped around the subject of the flesh. When you are dealing with the matters of the flesh, it comes with a lot of embarrassment because it seems to expose man's limitation at its highest. So most people prefer to throw it away and not talk about it. And sadly, some of the teachings that float around the body of Christ today use all kinds of things to just cover it and push it away. Whereas people are dying and they need help and need it fast. Number two, those who approach it from a standpoint that is not scriptural, and all that happens is unraveling the depth of darkness that is shrouded in flesh without preferring a scriptural pathway that leads to victory. Are you seeing the problem now? So there are people who approach the subject of flesh by avoiding it. So we have all kinds of things that are as a result of the flesh with no strategy for victory whatsoever and for others they only end up feeling condemned because they now come into the awareness of the 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 supposed strength of the flesh on them and then they begin to ask can i really survive will i really survive tonight is a word of hope Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting, use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.